What's going on everybody? It's Warren. Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder and we are not too far away from Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings coming out. As far as movies are concerned, we have Black Widow coming up in July and then Shang-Chi coming up in September. And right now we've only gotten the teaser for Shang-Chi and a lot of people are still wondering what exactly the movie is about. And today we have a pretty legitimate plot leak that gives us a pretty good insight on what the movie really is going to entail. And I do have to issue a spoiler warning because I do really think that this plot leak is what the movie is going to be. So in this video, not only will I go over the plot leak, but I'll go over some of Shang-Chi's powers and some of the powers of the Ten Rings as well. For those of you wondering what my next giveaway is, I teased a little bit of it on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram, and I'll give you a little bit of a tease right now. This giveaway should start next week, so be on the lookout. It's also worth noting that some more promotions for Shang-Chi have started, so we should be getting the first full official trailer pretty soon. And that's really going to give us the main story of what Shang-Chi is going to be about. But the reason that this plot leak today seems so legitimate is because it is extremely detailed. And that's usually a great sign that the information in the leak is good. As always, take it with a grain of salt, but let's dive in. It starts by saying, Shang-Chi is the son of the Mandarin, but refuses to follow in his father's footsteps and flees to the United States. Ten years later, Shang-Chi and his friend Katie work at a hotel in San Francisco. Razor Fist and his men attack them in a bus, but they manage to escape. So far, we know that this is 100% true because we have seen this in the teaser trailer. We knew that Shang-Chi fled, but we didn't know that the bus scene is actually in the beginning, but that makes a lot of sense because it seems like the latter half of the movie isn't going to take place inside of the United States. Shang-Chi and Katie visit Katie's cousin, John John, a small-time gangster who can hook them up with new identities. But Shang-Chi has to participate in a cage match to pay for John John's help and ends up fighting his sister, Zai Ling. And if I butcher any of these names and don't pronounce them right, I'm really sorry. But Katie realizes that John John sold Shang-Chi out and saves him. They steal a car and flee to a construction site where Shang-Chi fights his master death dealer. Death Dealer is one of Shang-Chi's greatest enemies in the comics, and we've actually seen Death Dealer in the Shang-Chi teaser trailer. Razor Fist captures Katie to force Shang-Chi to give up, in which he does, and Xilin takes them to the Ten Rings' lair where Shang-Chi reunites with the Mandarin, aka his father. The Mandarin is preparing an attack on the Valley of the Sleeping Dragon, a hidden city in the mountains, now that their magical barrier is weakened, and he's doing this in order to claim a great power and conquer the world. The Mandarin believes it is his duty to rule the world and genuinely cares about Shang-Chi and wants him by his side, but Shang-Chi refuses. Zai Ling is disappointed their father doesn't want her by his side and helps Shang-Chi and Katie to escape. Now, although all of the character roles haven't been revealed yet, it does look like that's the case in the teaser trailer. We do have some scenes where Shang-Chi is seemingly fighting his sister, and we have some scenes where it looks like she is about to help them out. So Shang-Chi, Katie, and Zai Ling go to the Valley of the Sleeping Dragon to warn them, and it looks like we have pretty much seen this battle in the teaser trailer. They meet its protector, Jiang Nan, and her daughter, Jiang Li, who bonds with Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi trains with Jian Li to unlock his chi. Katie befriends the locals and adopts a magical creature that she names Norris. And Xia Ling learns the true history of the Mandarin. The Mandarin arrived in the Valley of the Sleeping Dragon as a young man and trained there, but he stole the Ten Rings and escaped to build his criminal empire. Jian Li leads Shang-Chi to the Great Protector, the dragon who holds the great power that the Mandarin is after. The Great Protector claims that Shang-Chi is destined to protect the world, but Shang-Chi just wants a normal life. Xia Ling is secretly still loyal to the Mandarin and reluctantly disables the magical barrier, allowing the Mandarin and his forces to attack. This is that battle scene that I mentioned. The Mandarin subjugates the locals and uses the Ten Rings to control the Great Protector in order to use him as a weapon. Zhai Nan stands against him, forcing the Mandarin to kill her. The Mandarin orders the locals to submit to him or die. Xia Ling pleads for their lives, but the Mandarin refuses to spare them. Xia Ling realizes he isn't a noble warrior and chooses to die with the locals. Shang-Chi escapes during the attack, accepts his destiny, and unlocks his chi and returns to face his father, saving the locals. There is a huge battle between the Mandarin's army and the warriors of the Valley of the Sleeping Dragon and the magical creatures that live in the mountains. Razor Fist fights Jian Li and almost kills her until Katie intervenes and takes him down. 
Meanwhile, Xi Ling fights and kills Death Dealer. Shang-Chi battles the Mandarin. They both use their powers at first, but then Shang-Chi challenges him to an honorable fight, which he wins. Shang-Chi reclaims the Ten Rings and frees the Great Protector, who then repels what's left of the Mandarin's army. Shang-Chi then returns the Ten Rings to Jiang Li. Katie ends up choosing to stay in the Valley of the Sleeping Dragon, while Xi Ling leaves to search for redemption. The Mandarin accepts defeat and expresses pride in Shang-Chi, and Shang-Chi expresses respect towards his father even if his ideals are wrong. The Mandarin is imprisoned in the Valley of the Sleeping Dragon, while Shang-Chi returns to the world to destroy what is left of the Ten Rings organization. And that's it for this plot leak, and I gotta say, I really think that this could be the movie. It lines up with what we saw in the teaser trailer, but it also gives an extremely detailed account of things that we haven't seen in the teaser trailer. And honestly, this sounds pretty dang good. This is going to be a Marvel Studios martial arts movie. That's who Shang-Chi is. He is the master of Kung Fu. He is among the greatest fighters in Marvel Comics history. And one of the cool things about him is the fact that he really kind of doesn't have any superpowers. Shang-Chi is the master of Kung Fu, that is his biggest asset. But his discipline is also a huge part of his skill. He has mastered all of his five senses. He has complete control over his body. He can control his blood flow to slow the spread of poison. He can regulate his own heartbeat and even slow down his own bleeding. He also has control over his nervous system so that he can numb himself to the pain that he receives. He's also a master of weapons and acrobats, which makes him an insanely deadly warrior. He also has chi control or energy control and he can channel his own energy into his fighting. This makes his martial arts skills pretty much superhuman. And that's the pretty cool thing about Shang-Chi, he's a pretty grounded character and I'm really looking forward to seeing this character on screen. Now I also talked about the Ten Rings and I'll explain their powers as well. Now in the comics, the Ten Rings were actually rings that you wore in your fingers. Whereas in the movie, we have seen that the rings are actually kind of like bracelets that we see the characters wearing on their arms. Each ring has a different power, and keep in mind that Marvel Studios may not copy exactly what the Marvel Comics did and could change their powers up a little bit, but here's what they are in the comics. We'll start with the left hand, and we'll start with the pinky, which is Ice Blast. So essentially the power of Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat. The ring finger is Minto Intensifier, which means the Mandarin can magnify his psychic energy, enabling him to mentally control a person. However, he can only do this at short ranges. The middle finger is Electricity Blast. The index finger is Flame Blast. And the thumb is White Light. It emits many different types of energy from the electromagnetic spectrum, essentially laser beams. So that was the left hand, now on to the right hand. The pinky is black light. It creates an area of absolute blackness where all light is absorbed. The ring finger is a disintegration beam, which can destroy the bonds between atoms and molecules, causing an object's cohesion to fall apart. However, when this is used, it needs 20 minutes to recharge. The middle finger is a vortex beam which causes the air to swirl about in a vortex at high speed. It can levitate objects including the person using it, basically giving them the ability to fly. The index finger is what's called an impact beam. It projects a concussive force of approximately 350 pounds of TNT, so pretty much a huge explosive blast. And the thumb is a matter rearranger. It can rearrange atoms and or molecules of substances or speed up or slow down their movements to result in various effects. So pretty much the 10 rings are super OP. And I'm actually convinced that Marvel Studios probably going to dial down the intensity of their powers just a little bit, much like they did for the Infinity Gauntlet in Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. But those are the powers of Shang-Chi and of the 10 rings. This movie sounds like it's going to be pretty awesome, but let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest MCU videos. Don't forget to like the video and for live updates, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.